Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another video for Stamp Timber. This is another exclusive limited edition collaboration set. This one with Honeybee Stamps. So it's this great big six by eight set called On My Mind. And there's the stamp set as well as the combo set with the stamps and coordinating wafer die. I will have links to both. Like all of the collaboration sets, these are limited edition while supplies last. So to start off with, I have some distressed watercolor paper in my mini Misty here with the smooth side facing up. And I took this big wreath image from the set and a sentiment, lined it up, and then I use my anti-static powder tool and I'm gonna stamp these images with VersaFine Claire Fallen Leaves ink. Kind of obsessed with this ink color. It's just brown for fall, basically. So inked it up with those. And then I'm going to stamp them on this watercolor paper and I'm gonna stamp it a couple of times. And as always, you could just leave it. You don't have to heat emboss it, but I'm gonna use Distress Oxide inks this time to do some easy watercoloring. And I find when I'm working with oxide inks, I prefer to have my images heat embossed. It just, one, gives it that raised edge that I like. And two, it kind of helps prevent the oxide inks from obscuring any of the lines because they have the pigments and whatnot in them. Usually not a big deal with VersaFine Clear inks, but again, force of habit. Plus, like with anything, I just like those raised edges because it, it makes it easier for me to kind of go in when things are still wet and color and I don't have too much... Um, blurring and all that sort of stuff. So I melted the embossing powder and it was Wow's Clear Matte Dull, another favorite lately of mine that gives me the raised edge without that shiny finish. And then, like I said, I used Distress Oxide Ink. So I'm working on my little Waffle Flower Water Media Matte here and just smushing the ink colors onto the Media Matte. And I'm using Antique Linen and Wild Honey and the new uh, Crackling Campfire, just a little bit of that, and Candied Apple, and then some Ground Espresso and Vintage Photo because when I was looking at this image, I was like, this is perfect for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. Like such fall colors and yet you could totally do bright colors with this too i struggled i was like ooh, this would look really pretty like to do those sort of cone flowers and like a really hot pink and anyway anyway <laughs> i did my first layer very messy outside the lines i've done tons of videos showing this this took me a very long time to get used to i just you know because you just you want to stay inside the lines but i love how it looks when it's finished. It always looks like a hot mess when you first go outside the lines with that very first layer. It's just like, oh, what on earth? But when you start going back in and adding deeper color and layering the colors onto all the images, it just starts coming together. And that's exactly what I did. So I did that first layer, used a lot of water, bled everything right outside the lines. And now I keep going back in with a little less water and a little more ink and painting everything. Really simple for the most part. The fun thing that I, what I really love about Distress Oxide inks and watercoloring with them is because they are these oxide inks and they're that unique formulation, it, it reacts differently with water than other mediums like regular watercolor paints or other inks and that. It just, that oxidization and weird little quirks that these inks have every once in a while just kind of does different things and I just like seeing how it all works. Plus, because they are formulated like this, they play very nicely with water. So they're very easy to color with like this. So I did all my coloring and then I made sure everything was dry, did a whole bunch of splattering, of course. And then I cut out the image. And then for my the rest of my sentiment, I pulled out my Honeybee Friend Wafer Dye set. And this wafer dye set is the pretty much like all of Honeybee's word wafer dies. It has the word, the outline, and then a secondary outline. But for this, I'm using just the word. And I die cut it from some Nina Desert Storm cardstock and some tonic gold pearl satin cardstock. That is still my absolute favorite. And die cut those, stacked all those layers together. So I've got that bit of dimension. And then I also pulled out the garden lattice cover plate top and base wafer dies. I also die cut from some Nina Desert Storm cardstock. I did a video a month or two ago using these wafer dies, just white on white. And I really like it with that, but I was like, ooh, these would look really nice to back this wreath. So I die cut them, adhered them together, set those aside as well. 
Now my card base is just heavyweight white cardstock and I still have the wreath in my mini misty so I inked it up with antique linen uh, distress oxide ink. Stamped that onto the inside of the card just tie it all together and then I took another sentiment from that on my mindset because as is honeybees tradition there's a ton of big buildable sentiments in their set. It's one of the things I absolutely love about honeybee. So I chose my sentiment and I stamped that one with that Fallen Leaves First Fine Claire ink. So that finished off the inside. And then I'm going to adhere this, this die cut lattice piece to my card front. Just thin little lines of my Craft Hacky glue. And this will completely cover my A2 card base. So once I've got that adhered, before I do anything else, I'm going to put the card base and my wreath image into my splat box. And I'm going to add more splatter. <laughs> <laughs> the more the merrier. So I pulled out my Ranger Perfect Pearl powder in gold and I'm just working on the stamp like the one of the wafer dye packages. Just put a little bit of water down on there and then mixed up my gold Perfect Pearl powder there so I've got some gold shimmery goodness and I just I splattered this all over the card front and then I splattered it on top of the uh, wreath as well. I could have adhered the wreath and then done the splatter, but I just thought might as well just do this like this. And plus also because I wanted extra splatter on the card base. Not quite as much on the wreath because I already had all the splatter from the Just Stress Oxide ink. And I actually took the brush and like just added little dabs to the little branch elements of this wreath. So it just gives it that little extra something. So I did all of that and then let this completely dry before I start um, adhering anything. So I just set those aside to dry, it didn't take very long. And then I'm going to adhere that die cut friend to my wreath image. So same thing, just add a little bit of craft tacky glue and then line that up and adhere it into place. And then once that's adhered, I'm going to adhere this directly to this card base, again, with liquid adhesive to make sure it's all good and adhered and I actually set my misty like on top of this just to hold it down so that everything got stuck together really good and as always you could always stop here but I'm going to add a little bit more bling so I have some Studio Cotia Wineberry Pearls the red just went really well with those leaves and then Studio Cotia Golden Crystals as well and just kind of sprinkled these throughout this card front here and then after I adhered them I ended up actually adhering extras because you never I never know when to stop it's just they're pretty <laughs> so I adhered those with just little dabs of the craft tacky glue using my little embellishment wand and then also off camera I stamped uh, I have a desert storm envelope in my stash so I stamped that wreath right onto it with the ground espresso distress oxide ink and that finished off this card and envelope so I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have links to the stamp set and the, the combo set. Again, these are the limited edition, so only while supplies last. So check it out below if you are interested. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.